So we are going to create our first CloudWatch event. And for this, I can go to the CloudWatch event console, and then I'm going to get started and create our first event role. So for the event source, we have two choices. Either it's going to be an event pattern or a schedule. So if we choose a schedule, we have to say, for example, a fixed rate or a cron expression. And so we can say, for example, that we want a fixed rate of every one hour to do something. So every one hour, this CloudWatch event will be triggered. And then the target of this could be whatever you want in that list. So as you can see, there's a lot of different targets possible for CloudWatch events. But for example, we could say that we want to invoke a Lambda function. We can invoke my demo Lambda function and then have it being scheduled and triggered every one hour. So very really easy. We're just going to say this is my trigger Lambda function every one hour. And then we'll click on create role. And this has the effect that every hour, my Lambda function that I created by here is going to be triggered automatically, effectively making it a serverless cron job. But we could have another rule. For example, we could have an event pattern and react to events happening within AWS. So for the service name, we can see that we have access to all the AWS services and more. So this is quite a lot of events we can react to. But one event we can have fun with, for example, is to get an event of AWS console sign in. So we are saying, okay, we want this sign-in event of the root account. So we can say any user, or we can specify a user by ARN and have the root account in here, which I won't do, but we can say if the root account logs in or if any user logs in, then please send us an SNS message into this SNS topic called demo CCP. And again, I'm going to configure the details and I'm going to say send email when a user logs in. And this could be quite cool to have. So as we can see with CloudWatch events, we can have a lot of different rules with a lot of different actions. I can create one last rule just to show you what can be done. For example, for the EC2 service, we can go to EC2 and we're saying, okay, whenever an instance is going to be terminated, so it's an instance state change notification, and we want to go into terminated, then I want to know about it right away for any instance. And again, I want to send myself an email because I don't expect people to terminate instances. So maybe I want to be aware of it to investigate what happens. And yet again, that would be an event rule called send email when EC2 terminated and create the rule. So this is quite easy. This is quite great. And you can extend it to so many different things in your account. But I hope that by now you understand the power of CloudWatch event rules. And to be done with this, please make sure as well to, for example, delete or disable rules just in case you don't want to have them and receive notifications left and right. So as I said, CloudWatch event rules is also called event bridge now. So if we go into the event bridge console, then what we will see is that the rules we have created in CloudWatch events should show up here. So for this, we go to the left hand side and click on rules. And in this, we can see the three rules that we have created from before that are corresponding to Amazon event bridge rules. So in the exam, if you see event bridge or CloudWatch events, just know it is the exact same thing. So I hope that was helpful and I will see you in the next lecture.